Hello and welcome back to the Angry Dave podcast. This episode is the second installment of What the Fuck with Iraq. Steve, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Uh, we are going to talk about some weird shit that's in the uh, news. And, Steve, take it away. What do you got first? Oh, the first is from our lovely neighboring state, the People's Republic of New Jersey. <laughs> um, NPR is quoting a story where a massive dump of pasta Sets off a fury of interest and also a fury of uh, uh, environmental disaster, believe it or not. So apparently, 400 pounds of pasta was dumped near a creek in this small town. Let me see where it is. Old Bridge Township, New Jersey. I have no idea where that is. It's up north. It's uh, I, I did look it up a little bit. It's, it's probably maybe an hour um, from the top of New Jersey, but it's it's up there. Is that is that Central New Jersey? Yeah, mm-hmm. Central New Jersey. I don't believe Central New Jersey actually de- exists. It really is either North Jersey or South Jersey. I think there's five miles that are Central New Jersey. Yeah. yeah, my my actually my boss actually is from Central New Jersey. We have this argument all the time. There's like three three people that live in Central Jersey. That's it. Yeah, I think the dividing line is whether you're an Eagles fan or a Giants fan. Right. If you're an Eagles fan, you live in South Jersey. Right. And if you're a Giants fan, then you live in North Jersey. Right. So he's a Giants fan. He lives in North Jersey. There you go. It's fine. You, but there's no Central Jersey. No. It's you and the pasta king. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so the big thing is the they're trying to find out where it where it came from. Right. And no one can find it. Oh, really? And it spent the article spent a good couple of paragraphs trying to def, trying to figure out whether it was cooked or not. I don't know why that was a big deal. <laughs> Because the one expert said, well, it was soft, but it had been raining. I'm not kidding. They spent time to f- trying to figure out whether it was cooked or not. So it was like 400 pounds of pasta, you said? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my, I was going over this with my wife, and she said they did find eventually find out that they think it, it was a guy that dumped it all because his mother was hoarding it. Apparently, they were moving out of the house. I did hear this, that, and they had all this pasta, and he just dumped it. And, the, and here's, the, here's the big political question in the background. I know there's, there's always one. First of all, it was kind of dangerous because they dumped it next to a creek. So, so, so the wheat can kill the creek? Well, I'm, I'm sure that you know raw pasta or whatever doesn't act well with fish or whatever. I don't oh, know. Yes. They were concerned. Right. But the big thing was um, the town does not have bulk trash pickup. <laughs> it, it charges money, like big money. Like if you had like a sofa or something, it would like 200 right. bucks to go pick it up. And right. they were protesting. And people thought originally that maybe someone was doing this as a pasta <laughs> protest. A pasta protest. <laughs> Mission impossible. That's the line that was out yeah, there. I'm pretty sure he probably didn't cook the pasta, that the pasta got wet. Yeah. And that's what happens when it gets wet, right? It's, exactly. That's what, it how gets we, soft. That's how we get it to be soft, guys. <laughs> first of all, first of all, who cooks? 400 pounds of pasta anyway. And then dumps it. <laughs> but apparently they were very concerned whether it was cooked or not. Oh my goodness. But the story does have a good ending. Happy What's ending. That? What's the happy ending? They did manage to clean it all up and it and they named people who actually came out and cleaned it up. It took like four hours or five hours or whatever. And they took out all the other garbage that was there. So the creek is cleaner now because and, of the pasta. And oh, they had garbage there because people were dumping it. Dumping Some anyway. other things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what they do in Central Jersey. I heard they just dump shit everywhere. You know what I mean? Because they're fucking pigs. And and we don't do that in Philadelphia at all. At all. No. Not at all. Wait, let's talk about that real quick. All right. I want to talk about people that complain about how cities are dirty. Yes. And most of those people live in places where they don't have sidewalks and they have dirt for walkways. That would be correct. So you actually have dirt everywhere where you live. And so you're dirty. Right. And I have like one piece of garbage on my sidewalk and my place where I live is disgusting. Yes, of course. And you know, I have a house in rural uh, shit Jersey. Well, I, <laughs> New Jersey, I'm sorry. Guys. People's Republic. People. Um, I have a house and, you know, like back in the woods in these places, there's always like dumping grounds. Always. Yes. Um, and I, I'm going to tell everyone, if you don't know this. Um, one of the dumping grounds is Dave's fire pit that's outside of his house. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I might not be uh, environmentally sound all the time. Not environmentally sound means if it burns, it goes in the fire. That's right. Noxious fumes, 
mm-hmm. chemicals, doesn't matter. It'll mm-hmm. burn. Put it in. I might have almost bl- blown up my uh, my nieces and nephews a couple <laughs> weeks ago. What did you put in the fire? Uh, an aerosol can. <laughs> you mean the can that says du- dangerous, flammable? That that can, oh, that can. But it's so awesome watching it blow up. It really is. It's like a fucking. It's like a hand grenade. It's amazing. I think Dave is actually a pyromaniac. I, I, I was there the week after you built the shed. Yeah. Remember you had all the spare parts? Oh, I did, yeah. And the boxes and all the containers. Yeah. Oh, it'll burn, Steve. Don't worry. I'm like, Dave, no, it'll burn. No, it'll burn. It burned. It did, by the way. Yeah, it did burn. burn. <laughs> What's the next one? Okay. Well, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but fruit roll-ups are apparently a thing. <laughs> because some TikToker said... If you rolled the fruit, so I'm sorry, you rolled up the fruit roll up and you put mango ice cream, it's like supposedly awesome. Right. So this fad took off. Yeah. And in Israel, apparently there was a great shortage of fruit roll ups. So people from all over the world, especially America, were smuggling in fruit roll ups, 600, 700 pounds in suitcases. Well, the law is you can't bring more than like five pounds of food into a country. Right. So they got busted. These two, this middle-aged couple from the America got busted smuggling fruit roll-ups into Israel at Ben Gurion airport. Because they were going to sell them. Yeah. Cause it was like 50 cents for one and they were selling for like six bucks. <laughs> now just think of this. Yeah. I think the one couple got caught with like 400 pounds or something. Right. Each one of them weighs half an ounce. Each little fruit roll-up weighs half an ounce. Do you know how many freaking fruit roll-ups that is? Yeah, that's outrageous. It's crazy. But why did they think that that was going to, like, they were going to get get through? I, I I don't know, but apparently people did because they were make people were making a fortune. You know, it was an entrepreneurial thing. I mean, they they went there to make money. Dude. That's amazing. And they they got arrested. <laughs> and not just not just them. There's like in one week they yeah. they confiscated like almost seven hundred pounds of fruit roll-ups. We should do one of these episodes and try the fruit roll up with yes. with some sherbet ice cream. Is that what we're doing? Apparently, you just well. At first, they thought it was a rumor that they were using the um, the fruit roll ups in a sexual act. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> okay, but that's apparently not true. Right. The real story is this woman has it on TikTok. Yeah. Came up with, hey, just take a fruit roll up, put some mango ice cream in it, and it like the fruit roll up apparently freezes to it. Oh, really? So it's supposed to be awesome. That sound, it does sound good. You know, I want to really hate TikTok, but you just caught me five minutes ago. Yes, I did. Watching the dumbest shit ever. Just watching people not being able to dance or not being able to lip sync on, on TikTok. I don't know why, but it's, it's enthralling. Dude, I, 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 my, one of my buddies sends me NFL TikTok. So this one guy who does, um, he impersonates each team. He's got a different T-shirt, a little logo, and everything. Yeah. It is hysterical. Yeah, it's stupid. He he it, he's great. It's funny. I even I even like when they can't dance. <laughs> like like they're making these dance and lip sync videos, and they're fucking horrendous. And who who watches that and says, "Yeah, I want to press send on that." <laughs> right. <laughs> well, exactly. let, me, let me post that. Right. It's so awful. Lack of self awareness. I'm telling you. <laughs> I think they should go eat 400 pounds of pasta. I really do. <laughs> Yeah, what's the next? All right. So this comes all the way from the Netherlands. Oh, the fucking Dutch are weird. Go ahead. Okay. So apparently they decided that one sperm donor, 550 kids is enough. (laughs) (laughs) This guy had confirmed 550 kids. Holy shit. So they took him to court. Yeah. And um, they got an injunction. That he can't do it anymore. And the law. And by do it, you mean donate his sperm? Donate his sperm. Okay. okay. Yes. Well, he can still do it, I'm sure. But um, apparently the law is, they have a law for this. Yeah. The, the limit is 25 kids. That's all. That's the most you're allowed with 12 yeah. different mothers. You can't be more than 12 different mothers. Oh, really? So 25 kids and 12. Apparently this, no one caught on to this guy until 550 kids. Now, Holy shit. if you step back a second. It really could be a problem. It can be a problem, especially in a place like the Netherlands, which is a fairly small place. Yes. So like, you know, you're walking down the street or you're dating someone and it turns out you're, it's your brother or sister. Right. And you had no idea. And you could, it could lead to all kinds of genetic stuff, but yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there is actual genetic problems when you uh, fuck your sister. Like, I mean. Uh, is this the, this is not the voice of experience, right? I mean. You're no, just, no. You just you're, you read this somewhere. I read it somewhere. <laughs> it happened to a friend of yours. I mean, yeah, Maybe. <laughs> 
I never lost my sister. <laughs> okay, good to know. Right, Glad good. you put that on the record. <laughs> so anyway, they issued an order. Yeah. And then he said he can't do it. And he's subject to a, a fine of 100,000 pounds if, oh, wow. if he does it. Really? So, yeah, I don't think he's going to be doing that anytime soon. I think he's going to, I think the phrase is he's going to have to keep his sperm to himself now. Well, now can he, can he move to like, he can move to another country and whack off all he wants, I guess. I, I guess so. I don't know. I mean, man. you know, I mean, the guy's an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, he probably got money. I mean, you know. Yeah, you do but, get, you get money for that stuff, I think. And, and I get it because, you know, it is very sad and difficult when people can't have kids. Of course. And, yeah. and I, I get that. But this is a little over the top. I mean, you know. Why did he keep, I guess he's like a good looking guy, probably like, you know, uh, or well genetic. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's I don't know. But 550, no. he, well, apparently the big thing was too, that he was lying about the other donations and everything. So right, he right, was right. running the scheme. Right. But what, what possesses you to do that though? Uh, like you're he, a fucking weirdo. That's, yeah. that's a little strange. Yeah. No, you're st- stone cold weirdo. I guess. No, my point is don't like the women that get. The sperm donor, the sperm donor, get like their stats or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like he had to be. He's probably he's probably like got a big cock. He's probably got like. <laughs> well, what does that matter when you're t- when you're just no. doing the sperm? You're not. That's already done, dude. I'm just saying, like <laughs> like the dads are like, oh, I want my kid to have a fucking Johnson. You know what I mean? So that's probably why he keeps getting picked. Or he's like, I don't know, he's six three and he's ripped. I don't know. Apparently, he's Brad Pitt. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, 550 is a lot of times you get picked. It's not like, <laughs> like you know, it doesn't seem like the you you would hit the lottery that often if you're a troll like me. You know what I mean? Well, well I mean, he must have really had a good ghostwriter to write up his profile. Like, <laughs> hey, we want him, dude. But he had to be. And again, again, that's 550 sperms that were picked, right? Yeah. Like vials that were picked. How many times do you think that fucking dude whacked off for money? It's got to be a lot. And not only that, that's, they said it's estimated it could be more. That's the right. only ones they found, right. 550. Right. So he was probably going to a fucking place like three times a week, just fucking whacking off in a booth. Well, I mean, I, get him a girlfriend, dude. I, seriously, he needs a girlfriend. Yeah, he, he's probably one of those dudes that wouldn't be able to fucking get it up. Like, he just, he needs a booth in a magazine. I need a bottle, dude. I can't, I'm sorry, honey. I can't do it. I need a bottle. Get a Petri dish and we're good. All right, what do you got next? Okay. You were saying something about a, a being a, 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 a troll, and I, I was assuming that was a little bit about your height. Yes. But this one, this one freaked me out. This is from Sky News. Apparently, it is now a thing to get leg lengthening surgery. Yeah. Because reasons. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, and apparently, this has been done well over a thousand times. Oh, boy. And people that are like in their sixties are doing this. Really? I mean, you're going to shrink. Your spine shrinks all the time. You all see it. You know, little yeah. old ladies walking down the street. They're small, but yeah. So it involves you breaking the bones and put and soft tissue and everything, and putting in this lengthener that slowly stretches everything apart. The bone. It's it's serious pain. And then, but it takes like six, what, six, 12 weeks or something like that. It takes weeks and weeks for it to fill in. Oh, God. And I mean, that's, that's nuts. Yeah. So, I mean, because, and you know what the reason is? What's that? They were, they were victims of short jokes. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> like, uh, it was terrible. God, who had to have fucking three <laughs> thousand, three million surgeries? <laughs> Honest to God. That's the reason they're giving is because we were, we were really devastated by short mm-hmm. jokes. Dude, it's the fucking world we live in right now. I don't understand. I it's mean, it's the world we live in. To go and it, and not only that, it's expensive as hell. Yeah. So you're you're gonna have pain. Yeah. You're gonna go all this cost and risk for what? For what? I don't know. I mean, again, like I don't, I don't want to get into like uh, super sensitive topics because I don't want to get you fired. But um, <laughs> I prefer not to be fired. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, but I don't understand why we, like, I, I believe everybody should be treated with dignity and respect and you should be whoever the hell you want to be. Agreed. I don't care about that. I don't understand why as a society we were pushing for people to literally like mutilate themselves to feel better about themselves instead of teaching them to accept who they are. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. In fact, all the people that say let people be their true selves. Well, I'm sorry. Your true self is five foot four, dude. 
Right, that's, right. That's, that's your true self. Well, I'm not 5'4", motherfucker. I'm not I'm talking five, to six. you. Oh. I was talking to the guy getting the surgery. Jesus Christ. All right. I know. That might but be that, a little bit sensitive. Those two inches are really important, aren't they? They, they, <laughs> they are to me, buddy. <laughs> I don't We're still talking that. about your height, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, just making sure. They are to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you don't have that many, <laughs> they mean a lot. Everyone counts. Uh, yeah. No, but I could just the amount of pain that you would have to go through. Exactly. I have a buddy. I have a buddy who was born with no legs, and they offered to like you know like give him like full prosthetics or whatever. But he it was so painful for him that he's like, "Fuck this, dude." That, that's the, and he, and he lit you know he just lived in a wheelchair his whole life and you know he, whatever he was a wheelchair basketball uh, giant like literally wow. he's literally the Jerry West of wheelchair basketball wow like cool he was on the insignia you know what I mean really yeah really really interesting dude and and super smart and super capable guy but born with no legs and accepted himself there you go you know what I mean and did great, and did great things in his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite a disability, like a real disability, you know, not just uh, being a little bit short. You know, what what scares me about this is where the logical end is, right? Yeah. I want to be a basketball player, but I'm only 5'11". Right. So let's let's make me have longer legs. I mean, yeah. what? You know, I just had this conversation with the podcast I'm going to be releasing on Monday. We're doing this on a, on a Friday, so this will probably be released about two weeks, but uh, or about a week after that podcast. But uh, with with Stephanie asked me questions and she has a son who's short and, you know, he struggles a little bit worrying about that. And, you know, I've struggled with that my whole life and been underestimated and whatever. But, you know, there are certain things you can't do. You're not going to be a center on an NBA basketball team. But every pretty much anything else in with, you know, you can do. I mean, I might not be able to jump out of airplanes for the federal government because, you know, you have to be a certain height. Right. There's a few things, but you, you could make it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> You'll be okay. Yeah, and honestly, what does two inches really? I mean, seriously, in the grand scheme, going from five four to like five six. I mean, really? what is the difference? Yeah, I, I don't, and you're sixty years old. Right. Well, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Well, that's fucking complete bananas. But yeah. Oh, the other thing I actually read uh, on the internets, and I don't know how true this is, but. Apparently, guys that are under five nine live longer than those that are above five nine. Really? Yes. Damn. Well, I'm going to live a long time. Ha! <laughs> Boomch, motherfucker. Um, All right, what do you got next, you prick? All right, so uh, West Virginia, where yep. lots of fun things happen. Mm-hmm. There is a ring video of a bear <laughs> going up to someone's house and very politely ringing the doorbell. And then leaving. That's amazing. It's, it's like a ding dong ditcher, like like a it was a bear. Is that was is that what you call that in your neighborhood? If you did that, we called it knock knock run away. Yes, we we called it that too. But ding dong oh. ditcher is like a I, I've seen that on TV shows. And yeah, yeah, actually yeah. mentions that in the or, in an article. I thought that was kind of funny, but yeah, the bear. I mean, the bear's like looking around, looking around, goes right up to the the thing with its face, yeah. and rings the doorbell. It's amazing, and then walks casually away, like meh, yeah, no yeah, one's coming. You know what's <laughs> Yeah, I thought maybe they had some food, see? Anybody home? (laughs) (laughs) Could you you imagine just like being half asleep and going to answer the fucking door? Yeah, and there was a bear. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking grizzly bear. (laughs) Jesus Christ. That's fucking amazing. That that was pretty crazy. Yeah, it's bad. Video is fun. It's it, it's it's a couple minutes long because he's like kind of wandering around on the porch and then yeah. he kind of walks up to the thing and rings the bell, and then just walks and away. just walks away. He doesn't run though. No, no, no. no. He's no. just kind of moving around. You know, no, he was like he's like one of those like bigger kids, like 15, 16 years yeah, old, right. like a tough kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come get me. Come get me, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Can you imagine if he actually like ate the person and that it's like uh, it's like he's ringing for lunch. It's like reverse reverse delivery, food delivery. He's yeah. like he goes out and. Rings the doorbell and he's got food <laughs> right, right to him. What do you got next? All right. Well, apparently, I never knew how fun uh, emus were. <laughs> our, our, our last episode, we had uh, the emu that led uh, some people in Tennessee, I think it was, on a slow speed chase for miles and it got out. Right. Well, apparently, emus are like pets around the country. I don't know why this is. Right. But another one got out. Yeah. Um, this one was in Minnesota. 
mm-hmm. and it jumped over the fence. I think you got to get this fence thing down. Okay? Right. We got to figure out the fence thing. I, th- I think so. Apparently, the emus with the wings can jump a little bit high. Yes. The and- wings probably help a little bit. I mean, they can't fly, we know, and we know they're fucking stupid. But well, they certainly can jump. You can, you can, I'm going to tell you how fucking stupid this one is. So, first of all, yeah, you would think if you read the article in Tennessee a couple of weeks ago that you'd build your fence a little bit higher. But apparently they didn't. Right. So, in, in Minnesota, this emu broke out mm-hmm. and the cops were called again. <laughs> it must be like an emu squad. Right. So, they found the emu casually eating apples with a, with a neighbor. Okay. It was just ca- sitting there don't, being fine and he was easily captured and everything. But what happened was he was attracted to... The, um, you know, those, uh, disc golf, uh, courses yeah. that have like the nets on the poles, uh-huh. it thought it was a mate. That's how stupid this one was. He wanted to have sex with the pole that was holding up the net for the disc golf. Really? Yeah. He thought it was a female emo. I once saw you almost have sex with a net. <laughs> Not on purpose. But. Well, that's a, that's a whole nother story. Go back a couple of broadcasts and our podcasts <laughs> and you'll hear that whole story. Um, that was that, that was unintentionally. <laughs> unintentionally, uh, yes. 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 <laughs> that was the best net I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Beached whale. <laughs> I looked like something on the uh, out of the greatest catch. That's funny. Just this fucking thing wanted to have sex with the fucking net. Yes, that's why he got out. <laughs> he was lured out by the golf uh, disc golf net. Oh, Jesus uh, yeah, he's there. I mean, stupid. Clearly, I mean, like birds are not smart things. But it's one of the more dumber birds. Yes, it is. But smart enough to get out. Yeah. Well, they, but for really dumb reasons. <laughs> right. Well, apparently the one the one in Tennessee was hysterical because it just looked, I'm on the road and you're not going to catch me. And every time the cops cut him off, he just kind of went in the woods and came back on the road. <laughs> Very determined buggers, apparently. They they get out. Fucking idiots. And by the way, why do people have emus as pets? We're missing yeah. the, we're burying the lead here. I, I don't know. It, it seems weird. It seems weird. Are they lovable? They're not even lovable, right? No, they're ugly looking. They're ugly. And they're mean. Right, right. We we, we yes. figured that out too, right? Yes. They're like yeah. mean birds. Yes. So let's have a pet for, you know, which you, you can't bring it in the house. It has to be outside and you There's don't a, have a freaking uh, fence big enough. It's not like those, like the things that look like sheep with the long necks. What the hell are they? Um, alpacas. Yeah. The oh. Alpacas. And they're like, at least those, like their fur is worth money. Yes. They're, in fact- Alpaca fur makes sweaters and all kinds of stuff very right. expensive. Right. But emus, we don't, nobody even eats them. No. It's, I, I don't know the point. And apparently they're, they're in Minnesota and Tennessee and apparently it's a, it's a thing. It's like a fucking, it's like having a hermit crab. For it's, what? Right. Right. You can't, what, you can watch it, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name hermit crab. <laughs> it just sits there. Right. I mean, you know, it's good for like, you know, a toddler. To yes. have like a pet, right? Right. And then they die and then you know, so we move on. But at least turtles move around, dude. Well, tur- well t- yeah, turtle. Well, turtles move around, right? Hey, but yeah. a hermit crab? No. Oh. No, I'm saying a hermit crab and an emu, it seems like it's yes. fucking stupid. <laughs> sure is. I don't get it. <laughs> What's well, not? I, I'm, I'm going to shoot for a weekly update on the, on the emu population. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually searching Google for emu stories. <laughs> so, all right, next one is... Um, Good old Philadelphia from the AP. For those of you who are interested, the uh, Wheels in Motion bike tour, which is the naked bike ride Mm -hmm. through Philadelphia, Mm -hmm. has been moved to August. Oh. Yeah. And it used to be in September, but they claim it was really cold. And that I guess that was their excuse. But they said it was too cold in September. So they're going to do it in the middle of August. 10 10 kilometers through Center City, the art museum and everything, a bunch of naked people are going to be riding around on bikes. Have you ever seen this thing? No. Yeah, I've been witnessed by accident uh, once. Uh, what kind of bike were you riding? I was not riding any, but so I just would, I don't understand. Like, there's these nude beaches too, right? That exist. Mm-hmm. Most of the people that do this stuff are the most disgusting human beings on the planet. Why is that? Why do you have to be a big, big, <laughs> big fatty that wants to, wants to show their fucking junk? I don't understand. And can't you shave? Like, I'm just asking. Ask him for a friend. Please don't ask me. Because, well, you're looking at me when you say that. I don't know, and I've never <laughs> taken part. <laughs> um, but you really make it want, make me want to go see it. I'll tell you the way, uh, you, the way you talk it up. I mean, I it, mean you know, there's a few, you know, there's a few hotties, but you know, uh, I'm saying the vast majority have like loose loose shit, like loose shit going on. It's like a lot of looseness, a lot of looseness. I, I think that it's probably because 
the real attractive people who believe in this get gawked at and probably abused. So yeah, they, they, they keep it to themselves. Right. That's probably so, right. There's people that just don't care. Right. I just don't care. Yeah. And then it's mid August, right? So it's going to, and it's going to be in Philadelphia, which mid August in Philadelphia is 90 degree generally so between 85 and 95 yep. and 70% humidity. Right. And you're going to be biking down the Benjamin Franklin Parkway up the Rocky Steps. That's Sounds like fun. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of sweat mm -hmm. and a lot of old balls, old loose balls that may get pedaled. Can you imagine getting caught like on your seat? Like, I mean, you're pedaling, you're going back and forth. That's got to be painful, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, mm. just can you imagine your ball? Yeah, your ball like being a little bit too low and you lean up on your seat. What if you hit a pothole, dude? Dude, seriously, you won't have 550 kids. That's for sure. <laughs> that's a callback. Yes. <laughs> Damn. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, no, I have no desire ever to do that. I have no desire to watch it. And I had to actually see a picture when I did the article, and that was enough <laughs> because your description of it, accurate. Right. I, I did see that picture when yes. you, you sent these over. And yeah, every, yep. everybody, in it, everybody in it. Mm -hmm. There's not one attractive person. Uh, I don't want to say that, but yes. Right. <laughs> fuck. Put it this way. If if this picture were on the profile, none of them would be sperm donors. They would not have 550 kids. <laughs> right. 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 They didn't have the 12 inch Johnson. That's all I'm saying. Like, I get it. Like, if you're a fucking fatty and you got a 12 inch dick, then okay. I get it. Like, strap it. Oh, we're having standards now. Like, strap, strap it up and like ride around and show everybody. I mean, I'm cool. Like, that makes sense to me. Okay. I'm just saying, like, if you're a big fatty and you got like a fucking any, you know, <laughs> like you can't. You can't see the thing because it's not sticking out. Oh, my God. Well, we've gone around the bend here. <clears throat> All right. Let's move. In a completely related story, um, there is a state senator in Minnesota that was called for a vote. And he was at home. Yeah. On Zoom. Yeah. And he did not, I guess, know that his camera was on. He was in bed at maybe naked, but at least short shirtless oh, when he casted his vote. And ironically in the background was a poster of the schoolhouse rock. I'm only a bill, which I think is the headline of the story. Cause right. the guy, the guy voting without a shirt. I mean, we all heard lots of zoom stories where yeah. people are doing all kinds of stupid shit, yeah. but he was in, in a process, in a real proceeding on a vote yeah. for the state legislature. And he's in bed. Yeah. You can see the covers and he's no shirt. And behind him is a poster of Schoolhouse Rock, I'm Only a Bill. For those of you who don't know, it's historical. <laughs> so wait, what's the what, what's your worst uh, Zoom story that you've seen? Dude, um, this is actually kind of sad, but uh, someone came on a meeting and was completely drunk. Oh, really? It was bad. Yeah. yeah. Completely annihilated in the middle of the day. Oh, wow. And it, I, we had to end the meeting it was it, it was bad was it was it wasn't court though was it court no no, no it no. was it was a it was a, a conference so <clears throat> i have a couple uh when i was still doing when i was still doing when we were doing court virtually mm -hmm. you know we in workers comp in in pa like you do uh, in philadelphia you do like a, a cattle call call the list so everybody's on zoom this fucking one dude was like had had his suit coat on and all and then got up from the chair and he, he just had his underwear <laughs> There's lots of stories like that. Lots of stories like that. I feel a couple of times that happened. And then the one time when I was uh, at my new job, we had like a executive meeting. And this one dude was like a supervisor that was attending the meeting virtually. And he was sitting on the beach in his fucking, fucking, in his Speedo. Oh my God. With no shirt on. Oh my God. That's pretty bad. I've, I've seen some of them from vacation and beaches and stuff like that. I, like, I've just turned the fucking camera off. Camera you don't need the camera. He knew it was on. A hundred percent knew yeah. it was on. Idiot. The, the, there's one famous one. It was in Texas. Yeah. And uh, the guy's kids, it was a lawyer and he was in front of a judge. His daughter put on one of the um, ciphers, you know, the little, the little things that can make you look like other things. And he was like a cat. A cat. Yeah. And the great line was, your honor, that's not me. I am not a cat. <laughs> I am not a cat. And he couldn't figure out how to turn it off. And he was there in court as a, as a, as a cat <laughs> talking to the judge. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I did see that. And then his eyes are going like crazy. Remember? <laughs> and he was looking down at the keyboard and back up because he couldn't figure out how to fix it. It's hysterical as a cat. 
And but you know what sucked about that though is the judge was the most miserable human being ever. Nice. You remember that? Like he was just like super not, you know, like didn't laugh at all. Come, he on. should laugh. I mean, I I would laugh my ass off if come that on. happened. I, I'd give the guy a break, and he did give him a break. But you know, come on. Yeah, I mean, just have some humility. Yeah, have a sense of humor. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> what do you got next? <clears throat> One of my least favorite baseball players, Mookie Betts. Yeah. Mookie Betts was on a. Um, uh, he's on the. Dodgers? He's on yeah, the Dodgers, Dodgers still, right? Now, yeah. Okay. So he went on a, a road trip to Milwaukee and he would not stay in the hotel in Milwaukee yeah. because it was rumored to be haunted. Oh my God. And he would not sleep there. So he actually rented a B an Airbnb to stay somewhere else at his own expense because the rumors were that there were ghosts and he was scared of the ghosts. True story. That's so ridiculous. How how does that story get out? You nobody likes Mookie. That's clear, right? Well, he he admits it. Yeah. He's quoted in the article. It's Huff, Huffington Post. He he's quoted. He said, no, "I'm not I'm not risking that. It could be true. I'm not I'm not doing that." He would not stay in the hotel. <laughs> do you believe Do you believe in ghosts? I do actually. Um, not like the traditional like walking around with white sheets, but I do believe in spirits. So my wife very strongly believes in that. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I do you believe that they're from like people that passed on is that is that your thing i i think that well first of all we only know what 10 percent of the human brain can do right so i think there's a lot of things that we just don't understand right i do believe that everything ends up being energy yeah in the long run I right think that's scientifically proven right <clears throat> but i do believe there are remnants of energies if you want to get technical about it yeah and i do believe that they can affect us okay now whether there's a a uh, intellectual design behind that. I don't know. I right. don't think so, but right. I do believe in like resonant energies that, that, that a place can have that. Like yeah. you go to the Eastern state penitentiary. Yeah. 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 Stay there for a little while. You'll believe in freaking ghosts. So I have, I have a real ghost story. So we, my first apartment with Laura uh, is in Westchester, Pennsylvania in this old, old house right on high street, tiniest apartment ever. And Laura used to tell me that she's she that there was ghosts there, right? And I I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. And finally one day I said, and she's like, the ghost is here, like it's here again. One day I say, I say, all right, well if the ghost if you're here right now, show yourself. And I swear to God that it sounded like like there was a fucking tsunami in my goddamn bathroom. Really? Immediately. Wow. A tsunami in my fuck like like the whole bathroom should have been flooded, right? Like the wave crashed. Jesus. So I stood there and I'm like, okay, okay, uh, I believe you. you. Win. I believe you. I believe you. Oh, uh, give me give me the let's and look then, for a new apartment. Too. And then I opened the door to the bathroom. And again, this 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 uh apartment was three hundred and fifty square feet. So the bathroom is right there. Mm-hmm. I opened the door, bone dry. Wow. That's bone crazy. Dry. So I believe, I believe in, I, and I don't know, I don't know if I believe that there's spirits from past lives. I think my wife does believe that, that, that exists. I, that, and that may exist. And, and I never thought about it in a way that you do, but I also have been recently thinking about maybe it's another dimension. Could be. Or, you know, yeah. like how they, you know, how. You know, whatever. I mean, I, I quantum physics, and you, I don't want to get into that that talk because I can't express it well enough. But, <clears throat> but um, you know, there's probably a billion versions of you that exist, and, so, and there is some, and it's way over my head. But there is some proofs that kind of suggest that that's possible. That's possible, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so that that was like my other my other thought would be. That maybe it's just us, the glitch in the matrix, you know? Yeah. I, there, there was a friend of mine in the South and he told me this story. I, so it's not firsthand, it's secondhand. But <clears throat> in, this, in the South, there was a, uh, a big house, not a mansion, but a big house yeah. that um, they claimed was haunted. And this, these people, you know, second, third hand are telling me this story. But when the people bought the house, um, you know, they closed on the deal and everything, but they were told, like, don't lock your door. Don't lock the front door. Yeah. Like, why? Like, just don't lock your front door. So the first night they were there, they didn't lock the door because it was so scary the way they told it. And they woke up and the door was open. 
the next day. And it freaked them out. So they yeah. did lock the door. Right. And they woke up the next day and it was open. Oh and the lock God. was torn. And they said, all right, what's going on? And apparently, like, every night at, like, 3.11, yeah. 11 minutes after 3 in the morning, yeah. the door would open. Jeez. Didn't matter if they, they nailed it, whatever. It would just burst open. And the story was that there was a Confederate soldier who was wounded in the battle. Yeah, and, didn't and was walking through the door when he died. Oh, wow. And at that time. And that was it. it. Was hit. It just kept going and going and going. And they sold that house like a week later. Yeah. So this house, Laura used to say that she was, was having like a, you know, like this energy. It was like this weird energy. And she talked to one of her psychic friends and said, the, the lady said that it was basically the old lady that used to live here. Yep. And she told her to put a cup of coffee out for her. Really? And it stopped. That's bizarre. Because she used to kit, put her coffee back in the back, by the back door and the back door would rattle and that kind of thing. That's wild, dude. I just got goosebumps, dude. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I don't know how, I don't know. You know, maybe it's just, maybe it's our brain working weird. I don't know, but I tend to believe that they exist. I, I do too. And I do believe there's other like psychic abilities and empath empathic abilities that people can actually have. Like, I think. Laura might be sensitive to yeah, she is to those things. Like I feel like I am a little bit too. Yeah, um, I am. And not. like, well, you'll you'll just tell them the fuck off, and that's it. You're done. Well, I get I did one time, and uh, we never had another problem because I uh, respected that they existed, and mm -hmm. and we were fine after that. Like, <laughs> hang out in the bathroom, bro. <laughs> I'm fine. Just don't hurt me. But the next time you had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the I bet that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> just coming in to take a pee, ma'am. <laughs> right. No attention, man, sir. Whatever you want to be called, not a fucking care. <laughs> hey, you know that's that's that was her house first, dude. Right, that's just right. living in it. I'm just living here, buddy. I'm just not, I'm leaving soon. I promise. What do you got next? Uh, okay, well, it was kind of a deep conversation. Now we're going to get pretty stupid. We, during one of the uh, coronation ceremonies uh, in Bath, England, for King Charles, someone mowed a into the lawn. A huge erect penis. Ah, ah. And this is like one of these storied locations and everything. And they had all these right. fancy invitations and all these fancy people showed up. Right. And there was a giant phallus mowed into the lawn. So explain this to me. During the court, they have like different satellite places where yeah. people show up and like throw big parties. Yes. To watch the coronation. I think it's actually to celebrate the coronation. Like like people, royalty shows up and not maybe not the a-listers but uh right. i guess they either watch it or they celebrate it and they have the balls and the and everything else and, and then they have up. the balls and now they have the dick too yes <laughs> the third it was 30 feet 30, 30 feet long i got i got a picture i gotta show you but um so they called it the um the royal jewels which i thought was pretty funny <laughs> that's it, amazing huffington post it's, yeah, yeah. Got it, but it, it's uh so, so did it did it was it there because they they did it like two days before, right? When I when I was reading of that, I think so. Yeah, no so, one saw it, and then you can you can only see it if you're like a little bit away from it. If you're standing right near it, you can't. Right. But you know, did it? So did it make it to to the ceremony? Apparently, yes. Oh wow! So it is on Twitter. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous. And it's, it's it's like there's two fields in one where the where the event was with all the cars parking and circling, and it's pointing right at the building. A big, huge penis. So, yeah, that's fucking amazing. Uh, what do you feel about the royal family and the existence of it? It has way outlived its purpose. Yeah. But I don't think the Brits are anywhere near ready to get rid of it. I don't think I don't think the Americans are ready for the Brits to get rid of it either. I think they, the royalty is probably more liked in America than it is in Britain. Yeah, I don't really get it. Like, you're paying these people... You're paying them, right? But tax yes. money pays them yes. to be figureheads. And they have huge amounts of property and land and all kinds of stuff. Right, that they kept from when they actually ruled the country. Yeah. Right, that they stole off of, you know. The they, rest of the world. The rest of the world, yeah. yes. Yeah, the, that reminds me of the time that I was, have you ever been to the Vatican? No, but I've heard stories. It's It's amazing. So it is uh, amazing. The Vatican's amazing, but the Vatican Museum 
um, you walk through the Vatican Museum and you get to see artifacts from all over the world. That they stole. That they stole and killed people for. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, they they were cru- the crusade, you know, they were on crusades, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think about it the same way as this is it's really showing the worst of history. Yes. Like, well, you, why don't you give that shit back at this point? Well, it, it was very Christian of them to come in and kill and rape and pillage and then bring the loot back home. And it sounds put, very Christian. And then put it on display. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get the royal family. Um, I don't get it. I don't get the, the, the care for it. And, and it is a, well, now I think it's like a cult industry. Right. I mean, I don't know what a lot of Brits would do without it. it it's kind of its own cottage industry. And, and you know, you're talking about the Earl of Suffolk twice removed, the second, third cousin of the, and you're like, who's that? Right. And then they, then they kind of like, when you, if you listen to anything to it, like they make up names as they go yeah. along. I don't know. Yeah. Like who's the Duke of, I don't know, you know, yes. the Duke of this town. Well, they make people like, you know, John McCartney is knighted and everything else, but yeah, the Royal family. I mean, I, I've heard them talk about people like they're okay. They're, this sounds like a real important person. You find out they're like 53rd in line for the throne. I'm, what do I care? <laughs> right. Why do I care? <clears throat> yeah. But they still have a fucking a title you know, and a quarter billion dollars, right? You and know? land and castle and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. That's what I actually did watch a little bit of Prince Harry. Cause I, you know, I like to, I like to watch the shit show. So, um, but they were living in like a small cottage that was actually a piece of shit. Really? Yeah. Like they were living on the, you know, one of the grounds or whatever. And when they, they were living in this little place, it was literally like shitty. Wow. It was weird. Anyway, what's your next one? All right. So a uh, couple of wedding themes here. The first one, I think this is in Australia, if I remember correctly. The wife or the bride, I should say, at the wedding wrote the uh, wedding photographer uh, years after the wedding and said, hey, uh, I'd like to talk to you. And the wedding and, and the guy is great. He put it on. He put the entire text message on Twitter. So yeah. this is not made up. This is real. Somebody did send this to him. Right. And he was very nice and professional and said, oh, hi, how are you? I do remember you. I, I hope everything is going well. What can I do for you? And she said they've been married for four years and she wants her money back. She wants her money back because she got divorced mm. and she doesn't want the pictures anymore. Mm. So she should have her money back. And yeah. Yeah. he said, this is a joke, right? I mean, he wrote back and said, this is a joke. Right? No, she was dead serious because she got divorced. She wanted to get her money back. She wanted to give her the photos and get her money back. This is in Australia. Mm-hmm. Yep. Australia too. Like Australia is there too. I, I, I guess so. Like that, you know, it's like, crazy. Like you think of Australia and you think of like rugged people, right? Yes. But they're, they're Americanized too. And they're self, self-important. Yep. I'm divorced. Give me my money back. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? After four years. Could you, wait, could you imagine having married that woman? I, I think we know why she's divorced. <laughs> can you imagine what, what it was like getting, buying the bridal dress? Oh my God. I don't like that. <laughs> Oh, there's a stitch out. I want this for free. You she probably returned that too. Yeah. She returned that too. <laughs> right. I've been divorced, so this wedding dress is null and void. Give me my money back. <laughs> can Can I get my the money for the food back, please? It's, it's crazy. Like, I mean, how, yeah, that's the most bizarre fucking thing I've ever heard. Yeah. She could, it had to be fake. It just. He, he showed the text message. Now, unless the text messages are fake, but yeah. I mean, it's got her name. I mean, yeah. that's pretty stupid. It's amazing. It is amazing. I would like to hear that woman speak for one minute. And yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to her have her explain the rationalization for that. Yeah. Did the photos make you get divorced? <laughs> what? I don't know. What's the next one? All right. So <clears throat> I know a lot of Star Wars fans. <laughs> uh, last week was May the 4th be with you. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> apparently there were wedding ceremonies Yeah. on May the 4th according to AP, uh-huh. where they got dressed up mm-hmm. in Star Wars garb, complete with yeah. lightsabers yeah. at their wedding. Mm-hmm. And instead of the rings, they basically had their lightsabers touch each other. And that was their way of getting married. I don't want to kill myself. Yes, I know. I, I always, I was always told to don't not cross the streams, man, but <laughs> apparently it is a bonding ritual. So I, this is like, 
the Disney people. I know I'm going to upset people, and I and I think some people probably listen to this podcast. But I'm going for it because I can't go for it. Um, it's like the same. It's the same thing with the Disney people. Like with they bring their fucking bunny or their mouse ears to the ceremony, nice. and <clears throat> and adult Disney people that want to go like to Disney three times a year. Yes, and and not bring in, children and costume. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bizarre. What the fuck? I don't know. I've what? seen adults like singing the Frozen songs, and I'm like, what? What are we doing? I don't know. Why? Why are you getting? I just. I don't. Oh my god! I want to kill myself. And they say marketing doesn't work. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's the slickest marketing company in the world. I think is, is. I don't know. It's like an important day in your life, and you just made yourself a cartoon character. Basically, and and it was more than one. There was like four couples that did of this. Of course, there were. Yeah. Of course. I, I mean, of course. Of course. I, I looked at the picture. I was I was expecting to find the reverend in like Obi Wan Kenobi outfit, but apparently yeah. he was just wearing a reverend's outfit. Well, it's like but. I mean, like those radio those radio sweepstakes things. I mean, you, they can get people to do anything. Like these people are fucking retarded. I I I just don't. Uh, Star Wars is now Disney anyway, so yeah. like the whole Disney thing, the whole adults wanting to still be children, yeah, and then doing very adult things like signing a contract that is really hard to get out of. <laughs> Yes, the 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 most the most binding contract you'll ever sign in your goddamn life. My, my sister worked at Disney World. Yeah, the one in Florida, whichever one Disneyland, I guess it is. Yeah, World World in Florida. <laughs> okay, and uh, you had to have you had to agree to everything on their terms, and oh, she yeah. just worked in the park. Right, and it was like your hair couldn't be this way. Yeah, yeah. You had to present yourself this way, and it was yeah. it was just like you know, and they all had to sleep in like a barracks. Oh, it yeah. was it was crazy. Yeah, no, but I, I just mean, I mean, like making a cartoon character out of yourself and while you're getting married. Yeah. And married is, getting married is literally the hardest contract in the world to get out of. You think? Right. I mean, what, what other, what other contract do you need? Do you have to go to a court to get out of? That's true. I guess. But, right. You know, 50% <laughs> end up in divorce anyway. So. Right. I know, but I'm just saying, you don't know what, but I mean, but I mean, it's like the most serious contract. I got you. All right. Doesn't that, I mean, isn't it really true? I mean, what, there's so much law around that contract. And, and it should be a commitment, not a joke. R- right. Um, yeah. I mean, can you imagine when they fight? <laughs> Luke. <laughs> impressive. Most impressive. God. Yeah. You probably, <clears throat> listen, you probably, if you, if you were born, you, God, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, Don't, if, if, if keep that were, keep that train on the rails. Let's go. Come on. No, if you wear bunny ears, you probably weren't ready to get married. I'm just saying. I mean, it might have worked out. You know what I mean? You might have figured it out long over the long term. But if you got the lightsabers, you got the lightsabers out, you probably should have waited another week. But here's the other side. They deserve each other. They did deserve maybe, each maybe they belong together. Maybe you know, hey, they got this thing that they both wanted to do it. You They're both dressed up. Must make a pass. Yeah, what was their song? I mean, you know, I want to know what was played at, as their wedding song. Oh, come on. It, ha- it was the uh, intro. It yeah, had to be. Bum, 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 bum. In a church a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I mean, look at it. It's so fucking awful. It's crazy. But you, you mentioned something before about bunny ears and, and people getting dressed up. One of the stories that did not make this list. Yeah. I'll just talk about it real quick. Yeah. This is frightening. It, it, I think it was Disney World. I'm not sure where it was. It was some theme park. Um, this kid um, passed away. Yeah. And the parents put his ashes, I'm not kidding, into a stuffed animal. Oh my God. And then they lost the stuffed animal. <laughs> and they were trying to get it. <laughs> I should laugh. It's fucking it's- Hysterical. Yep. That's a fucking hysterical. They have pictures of the kid holding the stuffed animal and it was really, really sad. So when he died, they put his ashes in the stuffed animal and then he lost. <laughs> they killed that kid. I mean, there's not, they just, it was, it was an accident, but they killed the kid because they, they couldn't take responsibility for anything. It was very sad and funny. I didn't know if we should talk about that, but you know, uh-huh. there we go. Oh, thank you for bringing that. <laughs> Any year my fucking day. Oh God, it's uh, morbid. That's ridiculous. Yes, they look. <laughs> uh, first of all, 
putting the kids' ashes in there is level one. Yeah, it's, that's level fucking one. Weird. Level two is that thing ever leaving the house, and then the, the topper is losing it. Where did it go? Where you I don't know. What are you doing with it that you lost it? I got some ashes. I got <laughs> I got like people's ashes in my house, like in, in the house in Jersey. You know, I got a little corner where everybody's ashes. Is that stuff. where the ghosts hang out? Probably. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Yeah. I got pictures of the dead people, the pet dead people's ashes, the dead dog's ashes. You know what I mean? I've been there. I've not seen that shrine. And... It's it's upstairs. It's upstairs. It's on the, the little loft or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I'm terrified. No, it's good. I, I would have my dad's glove, but you stole it. I stole it? You yeah. gave it to me and gave my dad cancer. Oh, that's a good point. Remember? Yeah, I did. Because your dad, your dad sat next to the glove once. Eventually, he did pass. And one of the things, reason was he did have cancer. And when you gave me the damn glove, I said, thanks, Dave. Now I'm now my, my dad's going to get cancer. And he did. 10 years later. He got cancer. Right. At 132 years old. Yeah. Well, he lived a long time. And I'm sure as hell not giving that glove to my son. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Keeping that glove. That glove is not leaving my back. I'm playing until I'm dead. <laughs> I did give I did give Steve the glove. I said, Steve, you want this glove? It, he said, sure, I'll take it. I said, it was my dad's glove. He said, am, am, am I going to get cancer now? True said, story. Probably not. <clears throat> All right, I got, I got one more. Although, maybe we should just leave, leave on the Asher story, but I got one more. No. That was just that. Jesus Christ. What you... I, just... I don't I don't understand it. And not only that, it, the stuffed animal yeah. was not very cute. Really? <laughs> Stupid looking. Oh, and I have no heart to say that, but I just did. Oh, God. Really? It was it, a dumb stuff? It, it wasn't was like a cute teddy bear no, or nothing? Nope. Nope. It was like a gray, bluish thing. Oh, fuck, dude. It was, yeah. Couldn't they get like, couldn't they get, like a little pretty urn with like a fucking teddy bear on it or something? Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Well, now I know where our, where this is going. I'm not going to cut those stories anymore. I'll bring them. No, please, please bring them. Right. I'm an asshole. So. <laughs> It, it just makes me think of like the whole industry of death, right? And how, I, you know, I once had to go. My buddy Frank lost his baby, and had oh God, to, yeah, I know. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. awful, 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 yes. awful situation. Nothing. I'm not making fun of that at all because it was fucking awful. But um, we had to go to the to the funeral parlor, and they were trying to fucking upsell him things. The fucking tiny little fucking casket. It was the most fucking infuriating experience I've ever had in my life. I couldn't, I couldn't stand in there. Like he asked me to come for support or whatever. And I, you know, I, I, I had to walk out because I was ready to fucking strangle people. I agree. And, and you know, the, the you know, uh, my buddy and, and his girlfriend at the time just were fucking, you know, beside themselves. Right. They couldn't even think straight. They, they would have spent as much money as those people wanted them to spend. Exactly. And it's a, a disgusting fucking industry. Sorry, I mean, it, it, it depends on the of person course. in the place. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, the the, the the funeral home that my dad uh, handled my dad's funeral was awesome. Yeah. And um, we didn't know, but he had actually went around planning yeah. uh, to, uh, to who to go to. Yeah. And when we went there, because, you know, you, my dad, when we went there, we started talking to him. He goes, oh, did he go, did he shop at the grocery store right next door? And I'm like, yeah. And he remembered him. Oh, really? He had been there once. Like yeah. three years before, and he wrote. He goes, "I got a file on him," and they were they were awesome. They were they That's were awesome. just they you know. So it really depends on the person. Yeah, but, of course it does. Of but, course, but yeah. yeah, upselling for a child's funeral is one of the most disgusting things. Yeah, I could just horrendous. You know, like you walked in there, they had it all set up, all beautiful. Oh, you know, like what, how are you saying no? And and they're in such an emotional state, like you said, they'll sign anything. Of course they would. Because you know what it is? It, it creates this idea of if I don't give the best, you know, I, I love my kid. I, I want to give them the best. Of course. And, right. and it, it's, it, it's, it's a disgrace. It's, so, so while we're on that topic, uh, I'm going to say this a million times on this uh, podcast, just so if, there, if it's ever not clear when I die, I don't want to be buried. Burn me. You can do whatever the fuck you want with my ashes. If you want to take my ashes and take them and then spread them in an, it's something where it reminded me of you. That's great. If you want to throw them in the toilet, I don't give a fuck. I'm gone. But there's not going to be any funeral. Go have a party. And I, the only thing that I want is I want a New Orleans brass band. I want them playing second line. I want you marching into the goddamn party playing second line. And then fucking have a good old time. That's God, all I want. I, I think. <clears throat> I mean, I'm going to die before you because your people live until they're 132 yes, years old. 
good, so. good bloodlines. But <clears throat> I think your ashes, in all due respect, should end up in your fire pit just because <laughs> everything burns, according to you. So that's where it should end. <laughs> like me. I think that's his ass. It burned. <laughs> right. <laughs> what else you got? All right. One last one. So <clears throat> this is from Ripley's. Uh, so they did this experiment with parrots. And they taught the parrots how to video chat and they gave them like a, a phone and everything. Yeah. And they started FaceTiming each other. That's amazing. And they figured out that these parrots had like favorites and they would call the, the parrots, the other parrots that they liked and would do goofy things, hang upside down and make them laugh. It was hysterical. Right. And then each parrot like would do different things, right? Yeah. Some would talk to each other. Uh huh. Some Others would just goof around. Yeah. Hang upside down trying to make, it, it was hysterical. And they would, they saw patterns where they would call, you know, I guess other parrots that they liked. That's amazing. Yes. So yeah, so they had like the the quality of, you know, liking the like camaraderie or whatever. Yeah. They called it it was like parrot kindergarten, they said. They just really? got little groups and everything and taunted each other. That's it's amazing. Hysterical. So I thought that was pretty cool. No, that's it, neat. It's neat. Uh, it just reinforces the fact to me that uh, um we're all social beings. You know what I mean? We all need that so, uh, society. The, the one thing about that I thought it was kind of cute and interesting was there were a couple that what they would do is they would show their toys. So yeah. they would call the other parrot and then they would bring their toy over and show it to them. Right. That was, that's pretty neat. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like literally like a show and tell, yeah. right? It's like, Hey, look at this. Yeah. <clears throat> or, or to me, uh, the thing that made me laugh is that they, they were all different. They were all yes. a little bit different. Mm -hmm. They had their own sort of personality and own relationship. It was, it's, it's pretty cool when you think about it. So it we've is. gone from emu to parrots. Yeah. But parrots are very, are one of the smartest yes. birds, right? Yes. They actually have some intelligence. So my brother had one yeah. and I taught it a very interesting phrase. Holy shit. So whenever my brother came home, we'd go, holy shit. <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's great. All right. So I don't know if you want to talk about this now, but you know what Sunday is? It is Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day. And I know that Dave has an angry Dave rant. So I'm setting you up. All right. <clears throat> so I don't know how you feel about this, Steve, but I have a long history of it being annoyed by Mother's Day. And it really does stem around adult baseball more than anything. I'm with you. When we all, well, when I started with you guys 20 something years ago, we always played on Mother's Day. Yes, we did. It was never even a thing. Every once in a while, somebody would have to reschedule or something because they didn't have enough people. But in the last five to 10 years, well, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, about it start becoming a problem. Then we st it start being, well, we're going to schedule on Mother's Day, but you can reschedule. Yep. And then the last five years, nobody schedules on Mother's Day. We do not have a game on Sunday. Right. Year. Right. And that has been the way it goes for the past five years. We pay up. We play at nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. We are done by twelve. Why the fuck can't we play baseball on Sunday morning? Why? Why the fuck are that many men afraid of their goddamn wives? Well, that's a whole other story. And right, that's what it is. Though. It is. It is actually. You're right. It's it's baseball widows and and uh, um, baseball divorces. I'm not sure why, because when you when you marry somebody or you're involved with somebody, you take them for who they are. And right. if that guy is already playing baseball, then you understand that that's who they are. And I get ending the game at 12. And by the way, when Dave says it's over at 12, it's by rule. It's a three hour time limit. So it can't go on and on and on. It has to end at 12. Right. So you're home by one or earlier. Right. Um, you celebrate then, but, right. um, yeah, it's, I, I don't understand it, but, um, it is no longer a thing. No, no, no baseball on Mother's Day. I think it's a couple of things. I think the good part of it is that men are more, are more over the years, over the past 30, 40 years, certainly the last 20, 10, five years, are more involved with their families. Agreed. Yes. That's a good thing. Yes. However, it's it, it, take it to the extreme that you can't be out for three hours on a Sunday morning because it's some day that somebody told you that you have to honor your wife or and the, your mother. I don't need, I don't need particular days to like this symbolism. I always have a problem with 
Jinzano and I talked about my problems with symbolism. I I don't get it. Like, uh, you know, like the fucking, you know, you can't sing the national anthem bad. Like you have to sing it a certain way. Yeah. yeah like it's a, it's a goddamn song. I agree. It's yeah. art. And, uh, and and I get what you're saying. You're more of like show it every day. You don't need a special occasion to, to right. dance around and celebrate. Right. I don't need the special occasion. Mm-hmm. And if you if that is if that fucking day is that important to you, I ask you, you have to go look and see what the hell is going on in your fucking life. You know, here's the thing too. Honest to God. And back in the day when we played, yeah. some people brought their wives, wives or mother or whatever to yeah. to watch the game, and then you go out afterwards. I, right. It's about compromise, but right. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't brutalize my wife to ever have to watch her watch grown men play baseball. That stink at it. But I understand. But she's only been to what, like two games, three games that uh, I'm aware of. Yeah, maybe yeah, five or ten. Literally mm-hmm. over gotcha. twenty five years. You yep. know. Um, and most of them were championship games. So, yep. but yeah, I, I just don't, I don't get, I don't get why men give into that. I don't give in why it's so important to women to be f- given flowers and sent, sit at a fucking overcrowded restaurant and pay too much money on a day that they could pay half price the next day. Like it doesn't, none of that makes sense to me because Hallmark started a holiday 75 years ago. Yeah, I think next week is second cousins twice removed day. Right. Um, but, but, and again, it, Father's Day's not like that. No. It's not like that at all. Well, I, I equate it to Valentine's Day. Right. Um, I'm, I'm of the, per, of the mind that I would rather send flowers on a random Tuesday. Of course. For no yeah. reason at all I to agree. surprise someone and say, hey, I love you. This is, you know, a surprise uh, rather than be expected to do X, Y, and Z. And, and I've been lucky. Most of the people I've been involved with felt the same way. Yeah. Me mm-hmm. too. I mean, my wife and I don't, really, we're not big holiday people. We love our birthdays, but that's like a personal thing. Yep. That's not like a fucking fake holiday that somebody tells you to have to celebrate. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm huge on cards. I love cards. I will write cards. I get tons of cards for every occasion. I, yeah. I, I love that part of it. Yeah. But the, the, the having to go out to dinner on a, like you said, um, crammed in because it's going to be crowded. Yeah. And, and no, I, I'd rather just do something special on is, a different day. Is anybody really, is anybody really having fun that day? Uh, I don't know. It's, I, it feels more like an obligation than a gesture. Right. It's, you know, uh, than a, than a, than a, uh, uh, an act of kindness. It's, it's more of like, this is what we're expected it's to same, do. It's the same thing with Valentine's Day. It's like, mm-hmm. you're going to pay twice the amount of money. It's going to be rushed because they got to get they got to get you the fuck out of there, you know. It, it could be on in the middle of the week, and you have to make and you and then you buy each other dead things. <laughs> they may may not be completely dead when you buy them, but in four days, three days, they're going to be dead. Right? Is that is that is that a symbolism of what's going to happen in the early? There you go. And we've gone full circle, and now we're at Dave's ashes again. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't I'll never get it. It's it's never been important to me. Uh, and I've, I've been lucky, I guess I've been, you know, one adult person my entire life. So I've only had one real relationship in my life. So, and that person doesn't really like the symbolism either and laughs at it. That's what brings me to another, another point about symbolism. Okay. That I'm going to rant about a little bit. Uh Oh, two rants for the price of one. I am a, pr- a proudly an American person, right? I believe in this country and, uh, for I believe that it's flawed, but still a great place where you can thrive, right? And where we can make it better, despite the fact what the last few years has felt like. I, I do have hope. However, why do people ride around with their American flags all over the place? Is there a confusion of where you live? <laughs> like, do you need to hang it off your pickup truck? Apparently, yes. And you need to have stickers and you need to have... Yeah. some kind of bumper sticker about guns. Right. You, you need all of that. You need all of that. Protect, and then, protecting and then, America. And then you need your American flag right next to your Confederate flag. Yes, of course. Right. You need the, you need the one that says treason next to the thing that you're saying that you love. Are you referring to the war of Northern aggression? I am referring okay. to the war of Northern aggression. Just making clear. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't tread on my flag. Don't disrespect my flag, but then you got a blue one. I know. 
And that, 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 that yeah. you, you got you got a blue flag, right? Because of police or whatever. You know, it's great. And you're the same person that uh, if they ever pull you over, you're going to fucking lose your mind. Yeah. But nevertheless, but the blue flag, like it's actually codified that you can't do stuff like that to the flag. Yes. And not only that, if you're driving around with your flags out, then you're probably disrespecting the flag because it's not supposed to do that either. Yeah. And or if it's out at night, it's not supposed to be out at night unless there's a light on it, shining on it. That's the rules. But none of that it really matters because it's, um, we're in America. Yeah. And I just, you know, I'm in rural uh, New Jersey. Yes. By rural, you mean there's no houses but one that you can see ever. Right. I mean, you know, it's 50, 55 minutes from from my house in Philadelphia. But it could be it could be Mississippi. Yes, it is in the middle of Mississippi. Yes. I mean, it's it it is that. So I I get to see this like like super American thing that's going on that is literally it, it contradicts itself all the time, and it drives me a little bit nuts. The point really is I don't understand why why we we have to convince ourselves that we're American. There's only one country here. Like like Germany's like not two two minutes away. No. But you're, you did tie this in with the last discussion. Yeah. It's symbolism. It's all symbolism. And, and, and not only that, it's I'm more American yeah. than you. And that's, that's what this is. Right. That, and that, yeah, the point is get away from me, you, you hippie. You're not, you don't belong here. That's what that is. That's all it's saying to me. It is. I, I'm proving that I'm an American and right. you're not. That's you're, what this is. It's, it's, um, but, and it's division. Not, Right. It's the, right. I guess that's what bothers me the most is that, that that's what it feels like. It feels like you're telling people to get away from you that you, that you don't belong here. And isn't America the opposite thing? It's supposed to be, but not their America. Right. <clears throat> and, and you're right. It, it is all symbolism. And if you don't, if you have a problem with me, I'm just speaking as them. Yeah. If you have a problem with me demonstrating my Americanism, then the problem's you and right. I'm going to do it. I feel weird now wearing a shirt with a flag on it. Yeah. Like it, it, there's, I have a shirt that's, it's really nice when it says USA and it has a flag in the background. Yeah. I feel weird wearing it now. Yeah. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Because it feels like you're being divisive Yeah, in a way. Like because of what it's being used for. Yeah. And I, I've seen those trucks, two American flags from the, from the front bed of the, of the pickup truck. Um, Yep. Yeah. What a Confederate flag and some mm -hmm. fucking balls hanging on the bottom. Yep. You know that thing too? Yes. The fucking ball thing. Yep. The cow ball thing. Like, what the fuck is that? I don't know. What is that? And the, and the, and, little... and, the guy, and the guy that gets out of it's 110 pounds and 5'3. Like, <laughs> uh, maybe he needs some leg strength uh, lengthening <laughs> surgery. <laughs> He's got the fucking the brain power of an emu. And he can't jump as high. <laughs> Not. Jump is high. My Lord, Lord always says that. The guys with the Hemi trucks, you got the smallest dicks. The biggest trucks have the smallest dicks. There's a, there's a, there's a, a correlation. The dick size, yeah, the so truck you, size. I don't know if you're. This might have been before you were on the team, but there was a guy named Charlie who was a, he was a car dealer. Yeah, and he had a really nice vet. Yeah, and someone walked up and said, "Hey, Charlie, great car. Sorry about your dick." <laughs> That's amazing. Who was that? Who said that? You remember? I don't. It's before you, so it's going back more than 20 yeah. years. Yeah, wait, a long time. We got anything else? Anything else I'm, we want to rant about? I'm done for now. All right, buddy. Thank you for doing this. I think we had a good, uh, a good episode here. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Until right. so next time, I'm out. Peace. See y'all.